I painted a cheetah this week and in this video I want to share a few of the choices I made and some of the techniques I used to paint it. The reference photo I used for this painting is my own. I took it at an open plain zoo here in Australia. It's not a great photo because I was a fair distance from her and I had to take it through the wire that was between her and I, but it was good enough for what I needed. One of the choices I made before I started painting was to keep the background fairly simple. The markings on her fur are quite busy, so I thought I'd keep the background plain. I included a soft, hazy area in the foreground to ground her, but that's about it. Another choice I made before I started painting was to fade the colour away on her legs to keep the focus up near her head and body. I mixed some black paint because pre-mixed black can be quite flat looking with no life in it. For variation and interest, I included some soft edges on the spots as well as some hard edges and I made sure that I got all of the shadows painted in underneath the markings before I started adding all the black areas. That's important because once the black went on there, I didn't want to have to paint anything over the top of it because I would have disturbed it and created a mess. I used my favourite paper, Arsh 300 pound cold press and Windsor & Newton watercolour paints. I used only four colours, French ultramarine, burnt sienna, some transparent yellow on the eyes and a small amount of Antwerp blue in a few places. Raw sienna was the overall colour that I chose for the cheetah. I washed it all over apart from the areas that I wanted to leave white. At the bottom where the feet are I softened away the paint edges so that they'd blend into the foreground later when I painted it in. I kept the colour quite pale down here and while the paint was wet I charged in some Antwerp blue, quite pale again, to add some cooler areas. The right hand side of the cheetah is in shadow and there's a shadow running across the front here that I thought I'd like to include. So once I got her all washed in I mixed some burnt sienna with French ultramarine to make a sort of a dark brown grey colour. A bit more burnt sienna. And I washed that colour in on the front there where the shadow is. I wet the paper before I put the paint on. And I wet the entire front section, not just where the shadow is. I wanted the paint to drift past the edges of the shadow, creating those soft edges along there. I took the colour down onto the top of that leg as well. I also painted it underneath the head or neck area. Here it looked a bit warmer on the reference photo to me, so I dipped my brush into some raw sienna there. Once the shadow on the front was finished, I dried it and then I wet the back and the side of the cheetah with some water and I started to paint in the shadow there. I left some of the raw sienna underwash showing through in places. It was important to get these shadows in place before I started to paint all her black markings in because it would be too difficult to paint it on after. If I waited until after the markings were painted in, then I risked disturbing them all by painting over the top of them. For this area of white fur just here, I got my mop brush and I separated the bristles and then I used the paint to flick into that area that's dry where the white is and that gave me those little jagged hair edges there. It's a fairly quick way of doing it. When I took that shadow colour down the back leg I mixed some water into it to make it paler 
I didn't want to take that dark colour all the way down to the bottom. As I said, I wanted to fade the colour away down there. Here I've got no paint on my brush. I'm blending that colour into the colours below. With this leg here, I used the same colour, the mixture of burnt sienna and French ultramarine, and I painted around those little hairs at the top. Then as I moved my way down the leg, I dipped my brush in my water container to make the value lighter. And then I faded it away to nothing again at the bottom. With the front legs, I had a shadow only on the right side. The left side was in the sun. I did the same thing here. I faded the colour away by dipping my brush into my water container. And just for interest and to cool it down slightly, I dropped in some very pale Antwerp blue onto that while it was wet. I saw some brown markings on her head. So for that, again, I used French ultramarine and burnt sienna, but I mixed a bit more of the burnt sienna in it to make it more brown. And here I'm painting them in on the wet paper. I wanted soft edges on the marks, so it's easier for me to do that on the wet paper. Instead of using a pre-mixed black for all of the markings on a fur, I mixed my own, again from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. I squirted out some fresh paint on a clean palette. I prefer to use the paint freshly squeezed when I mix really dark colours because I don't want to wet the paint to reactivate it. When you wet it, you dilute it slightly. So this way I can use a slightly damp brush to mix the sticky pigment together so there's virtually no water in the mixture and that keeps it really dark. It also gives me the added bonus of being able to use it on the wet paper without it spreading too far. Because it's thick it will sit where I put it and I'll be painting on the wet paper with it and that will give me those soft edges which is what I want in some places. There's some black markings on top of the head. I want them to have soft paint edges, so I'm wetting the paper here with some water. Then I roll my wet brush in the wet sticky pigment. It's watered down over here slightly because I was using that to paint the area around the eyes in. But here I want some thick pigment. I paint that onto the wet paper. It more or less stays where I put it because it's so thick, but because the paper's wet, I get those soft edges. So always remember that you can vary the thickness of your paint mixture. Use less water if you want a really dark color. And a small amount of paint here goes a fairly long way as well. I'm in the process of making a full-length tutorial of this cheetah for my Patreon site. With the full-length tutorials, I don't skip over anything. I voice the tutorials over and I provide you with the line drawing, my reference photo, some progress photos of the painting and a copy of my finished painting. I've put a link in the description for you. For the markings on the body, on some areas I painted on wet paper and that gave me the soft edges. But on other areas, like where I'm painting at the moment, I painted on dry paper. I used the black that I mixed, but because I'm painting on dry paper, I needed to make sure that when I picked the paint up, my brush was wetter than it was when I worked on the wet paper. Otherwise it would have been too sticky to apply to the dry paper. It needs to flow off the brush for me. I don't want to be fighting with it as I apply it. If some of the markings were a little pale after they had dried, I carefully gave them a second layer of paint. I found that most of them were okay with one layer of paint though. I also used a fairly large brush to paint the markings. This is my number eight. That allowed me to get the paint on there fairly quickly. Here I'm starting to work my way down the front leg. 
In some areas, I used a smaller brush to paint some little flicks, just to break the marking up a little. Here on this marking, half of it is in the shadow and the other half is in the sun. So I lightened the half that was in the sun with a bit more water on my brush. The same thing here, that side is in the sun, so I add a bit of water to the paint. That spot there is half, half, half in the sun, half in the shade. So the part that's in the sun is lighter and then I pick up more paint for the other side. And then as I worked my way down the leg, I knew I had to fade them all away, not just the ones that were in the shade. I wanted the focus to be up near the head and body of the cheetah, not down here on the legs. So you can see I'm fading the colour away here. For the ground area, I wet the paper and then I painted some raw sienna on there. I've got my board up on an angle so the paint will flow down to the bottom of the paper. I also got a bit of Antwerp blue and I put that on there as well, just to add interest. While I was waiting for that to dry, I put a bit of Antwerp blue in a few places on the cheetah as well. I painted that on dry paper there, then I took the paint out of my brush and softened away the paintage. I put it on the shadow areas in a few places. Here I'm painting it onto the side of the face. I did this because if I use a colour in one area on the painting, I like to use it in another area as well. I don't like to just put it in one place. When that first wash of colour was dry on the foreground, I drew in a few little grass shapes and I used some masking fluid to mask over them. I wanted the foreground to be quite simple. I didn't want to fuss with it. I thought there was enough markings and things going on with the cheetah that I didn't need to really do a lot down here. When the masking fluid was dry, I put a bit of water in this area. And then I used the shadow colour that I used on the cheetah. That was the mix of burnt sienna and French ultramarine. It's got a bit more burnt sienna in it to make it a bit more browner. created a bit of a shadow underneath the cheetah. I also dropped a bit of Antwerp blue in there as well while it was wet. A few more little flicks with my brush to create some grass. I put some more water down the front and a few more areas of brown. I dried it and I took off the masking fluid. Then I used my small eradicator brush to soften away the edge there. The brush is wet, the paper's dry. It makes it look a bit less abrupt. I've got a link in the description of this video for that little brush. I left it for a day and then I decided I was happy with it. So I cut it off my board. And there it is finished. I hope there were some useful tips in there for you. As I mentioned in one of my other videos, Windsor & Newton's Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine are two colours that I use a lot in many of my paintings. And I certainly gave them a workout in this one. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like. It's greatly appreciated when you do. And don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you again next week. Say action. action. One of the decisions. One of the decisions. I can't say decisions. One of the decisions. I can't get it out. Why can't I get it out? One of the decisions that I, I can't. No, I can't do it.